So with this brief introduction, let me call the first speaker, Dr. Sumita Agarkar, who is the Deputy Director of Pediatric Ophthalmology at Shankar Netralia, my right hand. She takes care of the department. Dr. Uh, Sumita Agarkar will speak on pediatric cataracts, and it's not a child's game. Over to you. Thank you, sir, for that kind introduction. And thank you for Asia Pacific Society to give me opportunity to speak in this session. So this, uh, the theme of this session was the case I learned from. And this is just a regular day in the clinic, 14-month-old baby. Parents complain they have seen white reflex of an eye since just 10 days. Visual acuity uh, not cooperative for Taylor also, but briskly follows light and appears to have central steady fixation in both the eyes. He's orthophoric, there is no nystagmus, pupils appear okay. Anterior segment examination shows cataract in one eye, dense cataract in one eye. Fundus is within normal limits in the good eye, but there is no view in the affected eye. We do ultrasound and it looks okay. So anesthesia clearance is done, posted for surgery and explained to the parents that IOL implantation to be decided on the table. Now, this is how it looks on the table with dilated. You can see that there is a a uh, little bit of uh, pre-existing posterior capsular dehiscence with a little fishtail sign here, and uh, which was not visible when we saw it in the OPD because uh, people didn't dilate very well, but in the surgery after you have put dilatation, pinocane and all, it's dilated. So I have to change my tactics a bit here, and uh, after the usual staining, we are, uh, able to do, I aim for a slightly smaller axis because I don't know how large is the dehiscence behind. We do a little bit of uh, hydro delineation, not really a dissection. And in such cases where we have to anticipate a dehiscence, I start from uh, peripheral aspiration of the cortex. And before I could aspirate, you can see that there is a already a pre-existing and vitreous has prolapsed. But since I have gone with uh, vitrectomy uh, cannula for aspiration, I am able to do the complete the vitrectomy, regularize the edges of the PC, and uh, the lens goes in the bag as anticipated. Uh, so again, another So IOL is implanted, surgery is given, glass is given, baby is doing well, we put him on patching and I'm feeling great. Say, okay, I know how to, I have cracked this. A week later, a three-year-old boy, again presents with five white reflex, five days. History of blunt trauma, that's the only difference. That kid was very young and probably had a lenticonus with dehiscence, but this child has a blunt trauma. Visual acuity 6, 9, and 0.5 with the Lea symbols and hand movements in the left eye. Orthophoric, again, anterior segment, uh, normal, or left eye is total cataract. Fundus is normal in the right eye, no view in the left eye, ultrasound normal, and this is, so I follow the same steps where you have to, so a little bit confident ki I have done many and I know how to do it, and yes, this really beautifully takes up the stain, and the usual steps are same, uh, like any other pediatric cataract. smaller axis, uh, luckily good stain, so I can visualize the capsule very nicely and I am able to so air bubbles are also Murphy's law when you don't want them, they will be there and more you inject, more bubbles anyway, somehow I am able to grasp the flap and complete the axis X is a little bit larger than what I have anticipated or was planning for. But anyway, rest looks like a usual pre-existing dehiscence kind of thing. I have gone with a vitrector in aspiration mode. And 
my fluid flow which should be lower is a little on the higher side there is you can see there is lot of turbulence and before i can clear uh, the whole cortex and a little bit of nucleus uh, and i'm now trying to hurry up quickly because uh, rent my dehiscence has opened up already and before i can catch it it's gone so i try to do a vitrectomy to in an order to float it up but to no avail there's nearly half of cortex which is there and uh, uh, this little bit which is left here i am asp aspirating it carefully but you can see fair amount of cortex is behind and there is a big spindle shaped uh, rent there again i thought let me at least complete my thing here and see if i do vitrectomy a little bit of uh, if i can float the whole thing up by pushing the fluid so i decide to go ahead and do the vitrectomy but all that vitrectomy does is to push that bit really behind so now i have to call a vitreoretinal uh, colleague to come and help me out and we do uh, three plane pass plane vitrectomy you can see there is a chunk fair amount of chunk there uh, which uh, i have to remove and i i was able to place the lens in the sulcus and child ultimately did well but uh, lessons to learn here is that you should recognize lenticonus and pc dehiscence pre operatively these are the signs sudden onset of white reflex bulge on the posterior lenticular surface if child is cooperative for Uh, slit lamp examination a uh, dense central cataract with relatively clear periphery is also indicative that there may be a dehiscence uh, and fish tail sign of cortical matter hanging around in the anterior vitreous cavity is almost pathognomic of pc dehiscence a soct and b scan sometimes can identify dehiscence if you really carefully scan these children uh in suspected dehiscence you should aim for a smaller anterior capsulotomy a careful hydrodissection or rather only do a hydrodelineation to loosen up the cortex a bit aspirate cortex from periphery keeping all the fluidics low uh, so that vitreous prolapse happens after you have done the cortical clean up rather than before and use a vitrectomy probe to aspirate cortex rather than your bimanual cannula and it is possible to convert dehiscence into a regular ppc and implant the iul in the bag traumatic pc dehiscence can behave differently the way i learned hard way because vitreous is fluid in these patients and in a congenital pc dehiscence like in the other case that cortical matter would have never gone down because vitreous is form and formed but in a case where there is history of trauma probably it's best not to do any hydrodissection and keep a vitreoretinal colleague on the standby and i should have put my fluid parameters much lower aspiration flow rate and all uh, and we should not have done any hydrodissection and hydrodelineation at all in the my second case thank you for the attention just one comment i think uh, uh, total cataracts many times we don't see them as orthophoric they will have a little extra foveal fixation reflexive especially if it is long standing but i think yes. your Suppose case that these were just 10 days and mm -hmm. uh, 15 days of mm -hmm. that's what right i'm just uh, giving them that yeah. uh, that long standing unilateral cataracts that uh, they are densely amblyopic and many times they don't improve at all with uh, patching and it will be suicidal to do patching of the good eye if there is a long standing cataract and do lens setting Uh, uh, viscoelastic, uh, yeah. Actually, a lot of it in India. A lot of viscoelastic decisions are by what patient can opt for or stay for. But yes, in these cases, probably if you are planning to put in the presence of a large PC dehiscence, like I had in the yeah. first case, uh, I used uh, 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 cohesive v OVD, okay. like Helon GV, okay. for uh, to make that uh, PC really go back nicely, inflate the bag, yeah. and allows me very safely to put the lens in the bag. Uh, yeah but uh, if you have already have a very large uh, dehiscence and like in the second case where i had no choice probably you can go get away with the pc without the lens also but I th I if think in the bag implantation cohesive ovd is definitely very very helpful yeah that is true that you know 
Every pediatric cataract is different, but also the choice of instruments and the viscoelastics that are available at the time, and even the implants, I think, make a difference, whether you're putting an implant uh, in the bag or the sulcus. Yeah, 20 years back when we had only PMMA, uh, it was impossible to put these lenses in the bag. Yeah. But I think now it's foldable lenses have definitely been a game changer, and they really help us to... In fact, we published our our uh, data on posterior lenticonus uh, and PC dehiscence, and out of 21 patients, we were able to put the lens in the bag in all That's 21. Good. That's good. And if you look at an earlier publication from UK, uh, there were a lot of lenses there in the, the sulcus. sulcus. <laughs> nothing to do, nothing to brag about no, me, no. but the, just the time. <laughs> yeah. We have much better access to much better machines and. I mean, you guys do a lot of traumatic cataracts. So in your experience, uh, you know, you said that the vitreous is liquid, you know, uh, uh, more yeah. fluidy and yeah. Uh, yeah. you're anticipating Especially now. in closed loop trauma. Sometimes. Yeah, how long in your experience do you see these? Because you see a lot of trauma than we mm -hmm. see in the Western world. Mm -hmm. So do you think a month or more? Yeah, I think more than that probably. Because yeah. this case was three weeks post trauma. Yeah, he was three yeah. or four weeks post trauma. Uh, by and the time it was they quite come and by, by the time the white reflex developed, probably they are saying three weeks. Yeah. So it might okay. have been longer. Yeah. longer. Okay. But he was orthophoric, so I, yeah. I believe parent yeah. consented. Yeah. Yeah. By the time actually your dehiscence may have happened at the time of injury, but for the fluid to leak and yeah. become cataractous, it takes maybe four weeks. Yes. Three to four weeks. Yeah, yeah. usually they say about yes. Yeah. yeah. So actually, I should have anticipated in the second case because the gap was too less. Means probably if <laughs> there has been a <laughs> there has been a more. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. That was a great case with uh, great learning points. Thank you.